What if I told you that there was a method in pharmaceutical manufacturing that can play a role in protecting your API, controlling the release of your API, enhancing the bioavailability of the API, masking the horrible taste and smell of a drug, and even targeting the release of the drug to a specific site in the body? Well, while it may not be all sunshine and rainbows, there exists something called micro-encapsulation which can be used to do all the things I just mentioned. Yes, it may be expensive sometimes and it may not be as consistent as most people would like it to be. But in some cases, the pros outweigh the cons by a big margin and micro-encapsulation ends up becoming a go-to in such cases. Now that's enough blabbering, let's dive into some details now. To understand what microencapsulation means, you literally just have to break down the word and look at the two resulting words that come out of it. Micro and encapsulation. Micro as in there is something very tiny that is involved in this process. In this process, particles in the micron range are coated or say they are encapsulated in a coat. Now one common misconception that I've seen here is people get the idea that if something in the micron range is being coated here, then this process won't be applicable to the tablets we use so often. Because of course, these tablets are not in the micron range. In order to clarify this, let me give you an example. Let's say you have a tablet that you want to coat for whatever reason. There's two ways you could be doing this. The simpler way here is to simply coat the exterior of the tablet, which is precisely what is done in enteric coating, for example. But a tougher way to do this is to break the tablet down into particles of micron size. Then these micron sized particles can be coated individually. Then you take these coated particles and compress them back into a tablet. Assuming the material you coated the particles with is compressible, of course. Now, before you think I'm an idiot to be doing this the hard way, let me tell you what this tougher way of doing things can potentially achieve. Coming back to the example of enteric coated tablets, what this basically means is that the tablet is not going to release the drug in the stomach. It will let the formulation pass into the intestines intact and then release the drug. But one Achilles heel of such formulations is that once the formulation does reach the intestines, the drug is going to spill out without any control over the rate of this release. This is because the coating was superficial, only on the surface of the tablet. Now, if you take the tougher route here and break this tablet down into particles of micron range and then coat these micronized particles instead, not with an enteric coating in this case, think about what you can do here. You can segregate these micron sized particles into two groups. You can coat one of these groups multiple times, which will give you a thicker coat. The second group you can coat, let's say only once or twice. This will give you a thinner coat. Now you go ahead and mix these two groups up and compress the resulting powder into a tablet once again. You're going to have a massive difference in the release profile of these two formulations. In the first case, you were able to decide for yourself where you wanted to release your drug. But you weren't able to control how fast it would release once it spilled out, right? Well, in the second case, you were able to do exactly that. Once the tablet would break down inside the GI tract, in the stomach or the intestines or wherever it is designed to release, it will break down into micro capsules or micro spheres or whatever you were able to manufacture during the coating process, which we will understand the differences between these in upcoming videos. But for simplicity, let's say here we have manufactured micro capsules. Some of these micro capsules will have a thicker coat, while others will have a thinner coat because of the process we followed during the coating. The micro capsules with a thin coat will release the drug faster, whereas the one with the thicker coat will release the drug slower. So you can see how we can control the rate with which the drug releases by taking this tougher route. Now, you have two things here. Firstly, You've now understood the core meaning of the term micro-encapsulation. You've also understood how coating and micro-encapsulation differ. This is because the first method that we followed here, that is precisely what coating actually means. On the other hand, the tougher route that we took, that 
is micro encapsulation second thing that you've learned today the formulation that you want to perform micro encapsulation on that doesn't necessarily have to be in the micron size range instead we take the formulation and convert it into micron size and then encapsulate it which is why the name micro encapsulation comes into picture now some companies get fancy here they use both coating and micro encapsulation which is probably an idea you must have at this point after understanding the difference between the two mesalamine dr marketed under the name lyalda is an excellent example here here dr stands for delayed release now mesalamine is used for inflammatory diseases which means it should be released in the intestines in situations like ulcerative colitis right this is why it is coated using enteric coating which helps the formulation bypass the stomach completely it is simultaneously micro encapsulated in order to sustain the release of the drug after it has reached the intestine now there's different ways to carry out micro encapsulation some of them are phase separation conservation multi orifice centrifugal process spray drying spray congealing worsters process and some other methods too let me know if you want these covered in an animated form too